Okay, so hello everyone. If you're watching this on, I think I'm going live on my Facebook page, Beat Blood Pressure today. Um, and if you are watching on the replay on YouTube, hello. Um, and if you're here live, hello. Now today we're going to be talking about heart health and well, heart stress. And so as with this, if, you, if this is your first time here, welcome. Um, so heart stress. Um, and purpose of these live sessions is to go from goal setting to goal getting uh, and to inspire more health, help, well, more self-health responsibility. Um, there's a quote that I always like to say, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And we have been a sick society for a very long time. The good news is though, once you realize this, you can actually make better decisions. Now, I am just going to pause there, okay, and just remind everyone that yeah, you can ask questions at the end because this is all being recorded. Um, but once I've stopped recording, you can ask the questions. And I'm going to go through the training first. So what we're going to cover today is, is stress all bad? can you yourself that would be great is that kyle could you mute yourself uh, so i'm going to try and mute there you go mute there you go fantastic all right so what we're going to cover today is stress all bad can we measure its effect on the heart can we change its effects on the heart as well and some simple actions for you to take as well Oh, this is all going very slowly today. Um, this is some of the things that I've been trained in um, to do with coaching. One of my favorite quotes, if you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. Instead, give them a tool that will cause them to have new ways of thinking. And this is one of the things I'm going to be teaching over the next, well, we've already seven weeks in, so there's another 45 weeks to go. Um, I'm an expert in mental performance mastery. These are all of the things we're going to be covering over the next year. The benefits of heroic.us. So if you are someone that struggles with your health and being consistent, go to heroic.us, download the app, start with the free version, and um, because you're going to have increased energy production engagement within the first 30 days. Um, the heroic protocol is knowing yourself, becoming anti-fragile. And this is particularly important if you have a lot of anxiety. It's forging anti-fragile confidence. And it's something I will be covering more as year goes on. Um, and the soul force equation, which I haven't covered yet. And then with the magnificent seven health strategies. Um, which if you get these right, then you are going to bullet yourself, bulletproof yourself against all kinds of health problems. Um, and so you have think right, talk right, drink right, eat right, move right, detox right, sleep right. And this protects your brain, your body, your bowel, and your health, including your heart health. It's easy to say these things, but to teach them takes time. So I recommend watching all 52 of the webinars that I will be doing. Um, although there is seven, I break it down into three areas. Functional movement, I, the movement that you're meant to be doing or the movement that you have to do. Um, functional nutrition, so nutrition that actually improves your function as well as making you feel great. Functional thought or functional philosophy as well. But today we're talking about stress. So ask yourself, okay, um, does experiencing stress deplete your health and vitality? Do you believe this? Experiencing stress debilitates my performance and productivity. Experiencing stress inhibits my learning and growth. And the effects of stress are negative and should be avoided. Now, most of the time, all of those are true. And for most people, people would just immediately jump onto that and say, yes, that's all true. Stress should be avoided. However, some people are beginning to start thinking differently. Experiencing stress enhances my performance and productivity. Experiencing stress improves my health and vitality. Bit of a difficult one to get around that one, your head around. Experiencing stress facilitates my learning and growth. And the effects of stress are positive and should be utilized. So, 
This is actually a little questionnaire that was put together by some people at a university in America. And it's in this book here, The Upside of Stress, Why Stress is Good for You and How to Get Good at It by Kelly McGonagall. McGonagall um, has done a great TEDx talk on stress where she explains how she came to change her mind about stress and what needs to be taught because there is so much stress in the world. Um, and instead of just trying to negate it, and trying to run away from it and avoid it and beat it, we can actually utilize it to make us stronger. Um, and she's uh, got a PhD in, I can't remember exactly what her PhD is in, but she basically is an expert in stress. And here's a couple of good quotes from the book. Um, and again, when you watch the replay, you can read the whole thing. But basically, stress is what arises when something you care about is at stake. You don't stress about things you don't care about, and you can't create a meaningful life without experiencing some stress. And I'm gonna actually say a meaningful and fulfilled life without experiencing some stress. Stress is part of life, and it's actually how we choose to interpret stress and use stress that actually makes all the difference. And yeah, I would highly recommend going and reading the whole book if you are someone that uh, has problems with stress, um, or work with someone who can help you get through it. And this is because you may have heard of something like the fight flight response or the stress response, but there's also something called the challenge response, which is basically, it's the same as the fight flight and the stress response, but it depends on how you interpret what's going on as to how, what kind of hormones are released. So basically in the challenge response, you do feel focused, but not fearful. You also release a different ratio of stress hormones, including high levels of DHEA, which helps you recover and learn from stress. And a lot of Kelly's book is about how if you can reframe how you think about the stressful events in your life, they suddenly go from being negative to you can actually see how you can grow and learn. You start getting more positive responses from stress, which then makes stress less stressful, which has a knock on effect to all kinds of levels of your life. And the idea of stress making us stronger is known as hormesis. Um, and it works in a number of different ways. Hormesis refers to adaptive responses of biological systems, whether that's your cardiovascular system, your immune system, to moderate environmental or self-imposed challenges through which the system improves its functionality and or tolerance to more severe challenges. And so this is about training yourself to basically put up with more stress. So one way is you actually change your opinion about what stress is and how to use it. And then you teach yourself and you train yourself to use stress by using various hormetic um, stresses. By how stress makes us stronger physically, mentally, and biochemically. And forms of hormesis include exercise, which is one reason why exercise is good for us, unless you do too much. If you do too much exercise, it's a massive stress. Soreness, so heat stress, can be very beneficial for the heart and blood pressure. Cold showers, when done correctly, and cold plunges can be very beneficial for the heart and uh, our immune system. Breath holding, very easy control. There's all kinds of different breathing exercises you can do to put some gentle stress on yourself that can make you less and less anxious and stressed. But also, a lot of the different herbs and spices and medicinal things, um, medicinal plants, they actually exert their effect because in the environment they get stressed in, they start creating chemicals. And when we eat those chemicals, and ingest them, it actually sets off these minor stress pathways in our body that actually makes us stronger. So for instance, a lot of the reasons why, for instance, turmeric is, is so uh, well used is because it actually sets off a lot of minor stress responses off inside our system that makes us stronger and adapts better to the environment. It's all very clever. And I've done a whole, uh, I've done a webinar about the xenohormesis. It's one of my paid for courses in my seven weeks to a younger you. Of course, I, I spoke about all the different herbs, or I gave a list of all the different things that you can actually eat that uh, make you more adapted to stress. Now, so that's, again, there are lots of ways you can go out and actually improve yourself by, with the right exercise, soreness, cold showers, breath holding, certain herbs and spices. And um, you can look up hormesis and exercise and how to do hormetic exercises on YouTube. Um, or you can stay tuned to uh, some of my videos and training. 
Now, when it comes to actually measuring the amount of stress on your heart, there is a place called the Institute. Institute. I can't spell it at the moment. Institute. I think it's of or for heart math. What? Institute of or for heart math. I can never remember. I've trained with them. I should remember. And they use something called a heart rate variability monitor to monitor your immediate changes to stress. Um, and I'll go a little bit more into detail in a moment. OK, but one of the things that they teach are coherence exercises. And that's what I one of the things I've been trained in is the Institute for Heart Math coherence training uh, exercises for the heart. Because when you improve coherence between your brain and your heart, um, it enhances the ability to maintain composure during challenges, improves family and social harmony, reduces fatigue and exhaustion, promotes the body's natural regenerative processes, improves coordination and reaction times, enhances the ability to think clearly and find better solutions, improves the ability to learn, increases access to intuitive intelligence. Um, and some studies there showing, uh, yeah, 40% improvement in memory, 24% improvement in short-term memory, increased ability to focus, faster reaction times, higher test scores, improved ability to learn. And one of the, that's the heart-brain communication, I'm not gonna bother you with uh, neuroscience today, but one of the other things um, that the Institute for Heart Math help equip you with is the depletion to renewal plan, which let's see if I can do a bit of drawing. Basically, let's go over here. Over here, you have, ooh, I want to draw. Oh, red, is it allow me to do it? Over here, you have anger and anxiety. And over this side, you have happiness, excitement. Excitement and anxiety are both very high levels of autonomic system arousal. But anxiety is more to do with the release of cortisol. So this is the fight flight response. Whereas happiness is more DHEA. And which side of this you are on is often more to do with perception than anything else. And part of learning the heart math stuff and some of the things that I've spoken about and the, the tools that I cover a lot of in, uh, where is it? In Mental Performance Mastery and the Heroic Protocol Becoming Anti-Fragile um, are all things that basically help change you from basically being depleted to renewing when stress happens. And also, if you learn to do deliberate things to renew yourself, you actually go more and more this way and less and less over this way. Now I've got to undraw by doing something silly. I haven't found another way to do this. Insert, there you go. If I don't do that, it will just stick on draw. So, Yes, that's something we can provide you with and help you with, but HRV, heart rate variability. So heart rate variability. Now, a lot of you are probably used to, um, if you've ever had your heart rate looked at, you're used to this line, oh, the top line here, so your heartbeat, and oh, lots of single heartbeats. But every single part of the heartbeat and the time from one heartbeat to the next is slightly different. And all of these things, um, there are mathematical equations that can be applied, maths, to, and it actually helps tell us a lot about what's going on in your system. Now, this bottom line here that looks like the surface of, um, of the ocean, these little waves, this is plotting of how heart rate is varying over time. Now, as you're breathing and as your natural rhythms are happening, your heart rate should be gently going up and down, a little bit like a wave a little bit like waves on the top of the ocean, and it should be pretty symmetrical. And all these, and how well it varies up and down is an overall indicator of how well your brain and your heart are connected. And basically, um, the better they're connected, the better this variation and the better all of these numbers, because they all actually mean slightly different things. And the higher the percentages are, the better. So I want you to have a look at, this is someone, this is the 5th of January, 2023, and this was at 9.58, okay? And the heart rate was 
was 79. Okay, and this is recorded over 300 heartbeats, but for some reason it just goes to 298 there. And so this was 298 heartbeats, how it's varying, and the average of these percentages is 49%. And I said the higher the better. So this person at this um, here then gives us a lot of information. But one of the things that everyone remembers is it, it charts them. So this was a 51 year old. OK, but this heart rate variability pattern, OK, was basically, um, you know, plus or minus three years is what I expect. So at the biological age of a 48 year old, so 51 biological age of a 48 year old. OK, and that was at on the 5th of January, that's 958. Then we did something. And. Yes, yeah. 11 minutes past 10, so that's 50, that's not five minutes, is it? That's longer. 15 minutes later, just under 15 minutes later, pulse rate has decreased. But look at this waveform, much more wavy, all these numbers much higher, 93%. And that is the biological age of someone who was 32. And we did something very simple, which I will, in the clinic here, and unfortunately I can't do it unless you're in the clinic, um, and we don't know how it will affect you until we measure it. And this is actually quite unusual that it was actually quite a big change this quickly with this one particular technique, though other techniques are actually um, yeah, usually this good, which you can actually start using no matter where you are. Um, and so the other thing that we actually measured is the amount of stress on the heart using the same piece of equipment. And the heart stress index ideally should be between 10 and 100. So before we did what we did, it was 156. So that means there's some stress. OK, now when it gets to 300, this is really bad. So this person did have heart stress, wasn't perfect, but it wasn't like, oh, my word, you need to do something right now. Um, so 156, so not good. But directly after, heart stress went down to 59. Very, very quick, very, very easy. And this person went from having a biological age of 48 to a biological, biological age of 32 in just a few minutes. And how did we do that? We did that with some spinal adjustments. I originally trained as a chiropractor. And there are, don't worry, I'm not going to tell you everyone that you need a chiropractor. As I said, this was actually quite unusual for it to be such a big jump um, with one single adjustment. Um, but spinal adjustments have been shown to help lower blood pressure, improve nerve function to the heart, decrease blood markers of inflammation, improve heart rate variability, and decrease chest pain. Um, and in her case, I think it was the stuck ribs and other things that were actually causing the dysfunction and stress on her heart. Um, but again, until you have it measured and tested, you don't know what's causing the stress on your heart. Now, the techniques that make a much more, uh, what's the word, much more frequent difference between before and after, where before and after, yeah. The techniques that make the biggest difference between before and after are actually different um, breathing and relaxation techniques. Um, and using certain tools, there's one, there's a tool that I use in the clinic called the Brain Tap app, which um, again, if you want more information on the Brain Tap app, we can talk about that and I can send out links um, if I've got your email. But one of the things you can do is you can pop over to my Zen breathing video, and that's a combination of three breathing techniques. I've put a QR code there. So if you've got a QR scanner on your phone, you can actually use that. Or if you're on my email list, I can send you the direct link. Um, and that's my BDI is there, by the way. And basically what the Zen breathing technique, it combines what's called the physiological sigh, um, with box breathing, which is something that you can look up as well. So you can look up physiological sigh, box breathing, um, and yawning. Um, it's a combination of three different techniques, put them all together, and you end up with a wonderful effect on the brain. So, and I've done, I can send you the webinars on yawning. I mean, it's amazing the, the, what yawning can actually do to the body. It's incredible. And the brain, the yawning, physiological sigh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a slide here. And new slide. So it's uh, the physiological side. So you can look that up. You can look up uh, the effects of yawning. Um, we've forgotten the name of the guy. And then you have box breathing. 
box breathing. Ah, no, I didn't do box breathing. I did box breathing with the farmer burns stomach flatner. Okay, God, I've been doing these things for so long, I forget exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing these techniques. But anyway, um, yeah, go on to look up my name, Chris Picard and Zen Breathing. Chris Picard and Zen Breathing. Um, and you should find my YouTube video about the combining all those techniques together. And you will have a wonderful effect on your brain and your mind just by using any one of those, basically. Now there are supplements as well. Magnesium is one of the top ones. Magnesium is something that's burnt up in stress, but you also need magnesium to relax the brain. Um, if you've got low magnesium, you can have high blood pressure. And so very often, if you have enough magnesium, your blood pressure can normalize. Magnesium needs to relax muscles. It's needed for energy production, carbohydrate uses. It goes on and on and on and on. So if you're not taking magnesium, um, it's worth actually taking little bits and building up to the most that your bowels can tolerate. Too much magnesium equals loose bowels, basically. So you just back off so you have, you have loose bowels. B vitamins, again, massively used up in times of stress and you, because you need B vitamins to switch off stress. Now, when it comes to the heart, vitamin B1 may be particularly important. Vitamin B1, B1 or thiamine, deficiency. I'm just going to write that in for you. Thiamine. Thiamine deficiency is actually happening massively from the food, from the bottom of the food chain up. We're actually finding all kinds of like fish and birds with thiamine deficiencies. And it's causing a big problem. If it's going in the lower end of the food chain, it's going in our end as well. And thiamine deficiencies can lead to anxiety, stress, heart um, problems, like um, a lot of um, chronic heart failure may actually be nothing more than thiamine deficiency. There's all kinds of things, side effects to drugs, possibly just thiamine deficiency. You have enough thiamine, side effects to the drugs go, but also if you take thiamine, the reason why you, why you might need the drugs can go as well. Now, other B vitamins are traditionally thought of as being related to heart problems, B12, B9, B6, but B1 you heard it here first, and um, I first heard of it from one of my coaches, Dr. Brian Walsh of metabolicfitness.com. So if you're in America, look up metabolic fitness and the cellular blueprint or the cell blueprint, which is one of the things I use with my patients. But B1, thiamine deficiency, it's a worldwide problem. Um, and if you've got a number of heart issues and stress and anxiety, then um, B1 can be a place to start. Another thing, taurine, this is a um, protein, um, an essential amino acid, um, which is a building block of protein, I should say. Um, taurine is really good for relaxing the nervous system and the brain, can really help lower blood pressure. Um, but strangely enough, it's found in energy drinks. And some of you may be thinking, ah, taurine isn't that bad because energy drinks are bad. And you're kind of right, because when you mix taurine with caffeine, it goes from being something that's very relaxing and calming for the nervous system to a stimulant. And when you get the caffeine and taurine just right, it can be very, very bad for the heart. So um, I don't recommend energy drinks to people because they've mixed taurine with caffeine. And I do recommend that if you take taurine that you don't drink caffeine like within an hour of taking taurine. So avoid caffeine if you're taking taurine. Um, especially if you've got a heart problem. So if you have got a heart problem, take taurine by all means, um, but make sure you, you avoid capping for at least an hour before or after. And then there's my favorite medicinal mushroom, Ganoderma lucidum, all kinds of wonderful effects through the body. Um, and there are loads of other different herbs and nutraceuticals that can be really, really, really useful. Ashwagandha, rhodiola, there's lots. And it depends on what's happening with a person as to what I'd recommend first. But pretty much always um, with hearts, um, those are some of the big ones like uh, magnesium, usually a multivitamin um, rather than just B vitamins, taurine and Ganoderma lucidum. And so what's next? Well, after today, I'm going to be talking, so next week, I'm going to be talking about toxins, toxins in the water, the food, the air, heavy metals, plastics, and mold, all of which are major causes of heart problems, as well as cancers and diabetes and all sorts of things. 
Um, if you're local, then you can reach out to me at uh, bodyimbalanceuk.com. Um, if you're international or you're not local, then reach me through beatbloodpressure.com. Um, because I have plenty of clients all over the world um, and don't need to come to the clinic, but if you can come to the clinic, there is more that I can do. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm also going to stop the recording as well.